That's why we have this set up. Today, we're going to talk about the spirit of adoption. And the spirit of adoption is not only just the idea of I receive you. Sometimes it's a physical thing. I'm bringing people into my life. Sometimes it's I have the open heart so when people come, I can receive them. But we all need the family of God. We all need family. Amen. We, were never, we didn't get here, get here without it. Birds and bees and stuff, right? So we all need family. But the kingdom of God is a wide open heart of fathers and mothers looking for sons and daughters who need fathers and mothers. Amen. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And those who are going to be talking about it is Megan's going to come up here and she's going to, she's going to lead us in that. And she's going to talk and have Barb and Angel talk to us this morning. Amen. Woo. So why don't you come on up here this morning. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll set up the comfy living room environment for you. Good morning. We are a little bit nervous this morning, so just bear with us. Um, <laughs> my name's Megan. These are my grandparents, Barb and Angel. Um. And we're going to talk about the spirit of adoption this morning. Um, although this is Derek's iPad, and he let me take notes on it, and he has like a million messages. So I figured if it goes south, we'll just pull up one of his and uh, talk about something different. Um, so the spirit of adoption, when Rich was talking and asking if we would um, talk about it, I automatically thought about being adopted into God's kingdom. You know, we've heard so many messages about it being sons and daughters of God and what that means. And but I was talking to Derek about it this week, and um, I just realized that there's so many different levels, you know, so many more personal levels than, um, than just that. Um, I was born into a single-parent home. My mom raised me by herself. Um, I don't know who my biological dad is. And um, up until the age of 10, it was just her and I. mom myself I can't even imagine the strength that it took um, to raise a daughter you know I just I look at her she's so strong and strong willed and you know that's where <laughs> I obviously get it from um, <laughs> a little bit of that had to be broken in me but um, when I was at, at 10 years old my dad who I call my dad um, came into my life and my mom and dad got married and so that's who my daddy is. Um, you know, it just, there, it doesn't matter. Um, he, he didn't officially adopt me. When I was like 17, I, want, I asked, you know, if he would, and we started the process. And then I don't even remember what happened, but I never, never got his last name. But you ask me anybody, and that's my dad. You know, he's 6'5", this huge guy. Um, I'm 5'2 on a good day. You know, but um, it do, I don't even think twice about it anymore. You ask who my dad is, and that's my dad. Um, and so um, fast forward a couple years. So that's the first spirit of adoption, I guess, looking back, was that. You know, him taking me in, loving me as his own. Um, and then you fast forward a couple of years, and I'm at this church, and I meet this lady um, who um, ends up being my mother-in-law. And she was, if you know Debbie, you know, I mean, she's a mother to many. Um, but very early on, she took me in. I actually met her before I met Derek. Um, and she was a spiritual mother to me. Um, you know, we'd go to church, we'd praise, we'd laugh. Um, and then um, there was a time where I walked away from, you know, the church and from God. And I remember one night in particular coming home late, probably after drinking, making stupid decisions, and I look at my phone, and um, <laughs> she had texted me something along the lines of, hey, just checking in on you. I know you've been out partying. Um, how are you doing? I love you. And I was like, what in the world? <laughs> First of all, you know, just the unconditional love that she showed me, but then also, like, how in the world did she know? Like, did she see me? Or I come to realize, you know, it's the Holy Spirit talking to her, but I had never experienced something like that before. Um, 
you know, there was no reprimand. There was no judgment. It was just, I just, I love you. I care about you. There's more to this life than what you're doing right now. Um, so that was probably the second part of, a, of the spirit of adoption. And then um, I meet Derek and then I meet his family. And um, before we were even engaged, before we were married, it's like I was welcomed into this family and there's so many of them. I mean, it literally, I still don't even probably know all the aunts and uncles, um, you know, but you're just, you're welcomed in right away. And if you know their family, you know what it feels like. Um, and then you meet the grandparents and it's like, I'm theirs. You know, we, we joke all the time that I'm, I'm more like grandma than Derek is, you know. And um, then along the ways, I start, yeah, I start talking to people and they're like, oh, Barb and Angel. Yeah, those are my grandparents or those are my parents. And I would ask Derek, like, how in the world are they related? You know, like they don't. And he's like, oh, they're not. You know, we walk through life together. We went to this church together. And I'm like, okay, so just everyone calls each other family or everyone calls each other grandparents. And so that's what I really wanted to um, ask about is just how that all started. Like you guys have so many adoptive um, sons and daughters and nieces and nephews. And did you just sit down one day and say, you know, we're going to adopt half of Tucson? Or, you know, how did that start? It's, it's God's love. It's, this is where Derek gets it from. <laughs> like Rich said this morning, talking about God's love. And we're all family. We just sit there and realize that we're family. You know, we, uh, God speaks to me in, in in different ways than everybody else, you know, but he puts things on my heart, and he used to, at another church, he'd always put people on my my mind and say, go invite them for breakfast, because we used to, all the family after church, we used to meet, all of us, and then we'd have extras come, and God just did that, and pretty soon after the first time, they were regulars, they just, they just, Love the family, you know. Uh, I see it here in this church, you know. I got a few extra specials that are always here that I love very much. Uh, I see all the new people here, and I'd get like to get to know all of you. I'd like to know all your kids. I may not remember all their <laughs> names, but I'd like to... Uh, it's just God, you know, and, and this little girl here, my blonde here, she's just a special young lady who I love very much, and she's always been, she's always a hard worker, always willing to do things, and I just love her. That's about all I got, you know, I, I'm not much of a talker, but I do listen to God when he's talking to me. And most of the people here are family. We've got a lot of family here in this church. And you guys are all family. So I'd like to get to know all of you. Amen. Here's my wife, Barb. <laughs> what about you, Graham? I know God was talking to you this week just about adoption. Oh. Well, the, the spirit of adoption is... Uh, well, let, me, let me read Romans because that's what we kept coming back to. Romans 8 says, and you did not receive a spirit that would make you a slave to fear, but you receive a spirit of sonship, and by him we call Abba Father. The spirit himself testifies with us that we are God's children. Now, if we are God's children, then we're heirs. Yes. Yes. And indeed, if we're heirs of God, we're heirs with Christ. We are reigning in the heavenlies with Christ and our Father God. And so with all of that um, as, as a foundation, we cannot not be family. You know, if, if God has called you into this place, 
if God has called you to be part of the family of God, you're going to be part of our family. I know that's terrifying sometimes. <laughs> but we, we just realize that God puts people on our hearts, and you react to that by loving on people. Sometimes it's somebody behind you in the line that's hit you three times with a basket, and you're wanting to say, excuse me, but God is saying, bless them. You know, sometimes it's a, a neighbor who's, you know, not always friendly. But God would say, be my love to other people. Be our hands. We're God's hands. And the love that we can shine through us to other people is you're going to touch people. So even uh, that spirit of adoption isn't just adopted children. You know, I know that we ended up with a few that we raised, a few extra that we raised, a few that we took in, a few that live with us for a season. God makes them all. He knits people in your heart. So I really feel that Angel and I walked walk in that gifting so I admit it's easier for you if you have like a gifting of speech or a gifting of evangelism. You're going to walk in that simple. It's going to be easy. It's just going to be a natural progression of what you do and what you say. So I have to admit we're blessed with being able to have that spirit of adoption on us. So we can take people in easier. We can uh, meet you, greet you easier than a lot of people. But I just really want to encourage you that whether that's your gifting and your calling, or if that's just something that you know that God wants us to do, God wants our love to be shared by all those around us. And it's not just the Megans and the uh, all the in-law girls. And I can't even, I'm going to mess it up, but like all of our grandkids' wives are no different than our blood because God gives you a love. You know, Angie and Dre, they all are part and parcel. And I really, really pray that no matter how much we talk, how much we communicate. I hope that when you walk in this door that you will feel the love of God in this place because our whole goal is to have that love sharing. We want to be able to have everyone walk out to lunch today knowing that there's somebody in here besides those that you came with that are happy to see you. That's our goal as a church. We all need to be open to other people. We might not know them. We, it might be their first time walking through the door. But God wants you to be his hand reaching, his heart. The, I'm just thinking that, that we have a father in heaven who knows us by name. Uh, he purposely chose us, all of you, to be part of his family. And so we need to reach out to those around us with that same love. We, we sometimes forget that every minute that you're breathing, you're capable of sharing your, the love of God that he puts into you. You're capable of sharing. You're capable of lifting someone up that's having a lousy day. You know, you're capable by your smile. Sometimes just a smile will change a person's day. Someone's having a, a horrible day. They lost their, if it's like me, they lost their purse. They don't know where their phone is. <laughs> They're asking their kids to please keep track. Don't let me leave everything at your house when I go home. <laughs> but 
I know that th that same frustration that people get on a, on a daily walk is something that each one of you can affect. Each one of you can make a difference. Each one of you can have that spirit of adoption over a perfect stranger. Um, the neat thing I was, I was sharing is um, adoption is uh, the recognition or affirmation. It's treating a stranger as if it was in your own. A stranger like that you walk into it in a store, that, that person could be affected by you. And the Greek have uh, a word for adoption, and it means to place as a son. And so those of you that are parents realize that a son and daughter to you is going to be someone that's always going to be special. And God says we are to adopt those around us. And so we have that thought that we need to treat those around us as a son or a daughter because they are a son or a daughter of the living God. So think about that. They are the son. If you don't walk in that, that's royalty. I don't know if you realize being a son and daughter of the living God makes you all royalty. And sometimes we don't feel very royal. You know, th things are awful. We, the toilet's backing up and you're trying to figure out what happened to something that you really need for tomorrow. You don't always feel like royalty, but you need to start walking in that royalty because you are absolutely royalty to God. God looks at you as his chosen. He chose you from before he founded the earth. He already knew you. He knew you by name. He knew you by name. You have been called, you have been chosen, and you're all special. So that really is going to carry into how we treat each other. We really, really have to start, stop looking at how different we are. Oh, well, I believe that, and that church believes this, or I believe this in politics, and oh, boy, that George over there, he, he thinks this one's special. So they're wrong, of course, and we're right. That's what we get in our head, though. God doesn't want the division. We're never going to agree on everything. We're not going to agree on politics. We're not going to agree on doctrine in church. There's 100,000 churches. Everyone believes a little bit different, and that's okay. You know, it's okay. We are all serving the same God. We need to all center in on what we have in common. We have a father in common. So start looking at what we have in common, not our differences, because you know what? The world will always point out your differences. In fact, lately, they're really getting good at trying to show you how different you are, and therefore you should not like them because they're different, or they believe different, or they see things different. But God says, no, you're all my children. So because you're my children, we're going to walk together. We're going to worship together. We're going to stand side by side. We are coming, I believe, to a time that's getting rougher every day to be a Christian. We need each other. We need the strength of the unity of each other. And uh, Angel and I don't know all of you yet because a lot of you came at the same time. So uh, at our age, we're going to have to ask you 25 times, what was your name again? Uh, please don't be offended. We're going we're gonna to learn names, but we're so happy that you're all here. And God is good. And this is a family church. And I want you to know that there is a spirit of adoption over this place. 
So I want you all to know you are being adopted. Whether you want it or not, you're adopted into our family, into his family. Amen. I want to circle back just real quick on you said you and Tata are blessed because you have that spirit of adoption. Um, but to me, on the outside looking in, I feel like it's a choice, right? And it's carried down to Chuck and Debbie. It's carried down to Kip and Dee Dee. You know, and the Uncle Tony, Aunt Dawn, they all have um, different areas where they're reaching out to people. You know, it's the races and Chris is a son and you know it's all these different people um Derek and I even joke the kids were I think probably in third grade and Kedra had one of her little best friends over and she goes Miss Megan um does Kedra really have like 30 cousins because she calls everybody her cousins and I was like well you know trying to explain like we just everyone's a family to us um but I feel like it's a choice and so I kind of want to know, because there's times on Sundays where, I mean, I'll be honest, I just want to get out of here. I don't want to say hi to anyone. I'm hungry. I'm hangry. You know, the last thing I want to do is sit and talk. Um, my husband will talk forever, and I'm like, guys, go get dad so we can go. You know, but so in those times, first of all, has it happened to you where you don't really feel like it? And how do you power through it? You know what I mean? Because from the outside, if it's just a spirit of adoption, like in it's it looks easy because you guys have been doing it so long. But for somebody like me, where it's like, okay, let's you know, suck it up, Megan. What are some practical things, or you know, what has God really shown you guys? Well, it goes back to teach what you know and reproduce what you are. Both our parents used to take people in. At, for periods of time, and uh, so it's easy for it's easy for us to see that, you know. And and like I said, it's God's love to begin with. It, it's God just lets us love people. You know, you got to celebrate people. You don't tolerate them. You can go to any church and be tolerated, but go someplace where you're celebrated. Yeah. It's different. Yeah, it's different. You know, we left for a while. God just told me one morning that we were gone. And I went up to Rich and Charles and, and told them we were leaving. So we tried a few churches, but you know what? We were tolerated. You know, we didn't have the love that's in this church. So here I am again. <laughs> Thank God. You guys came back. <laughs> you got anything to say? I don't know. There is, there's, there's going to be days. There's going to be Sundays that you get out of the car and you think, oh, my gosh, i got to put a smile on, and it's been a rotten morning. There's always going to be those days. But you really, you really have to just say, God, I want to be the light for you. I want to be the light that shines on someone that needs a smile or a hug, just to let them know that, they're worth something because they are worth something. They're worth so much. If, if the father said they're worth something enough that he could go to the cross and die for that person, that person must be worth something. So I just, my prayer is, is that I don't always have, you know, fuzzy feely thoughts for, for everything and everybody I meet, but I do pray that I would be able to see people that I know God has gone to the cross. And I, I have to keep that in my head. If God was willing to take a crown of thorns and be hung on a cross for that person that's rubbing you the wrong way, then you have to start asking God, show me what's in that person that I can love. Because there's always going to be people that, rub you wrong that's so, and that's all right that's okay the thing is how you react to it how you get past that there's always 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 going to be someone that has a something negative to say to you Re, don't return negative with negative always return how god would be at when i'm <laughs> angry at god and saying that's not fair you know why is our family so sick God never yells back at me. 
So we need to learn to do that with other people. We need to have a always a godly answer. Give them love back. Because sometimes that might be the only person that is able to love them back, even if they have a, you know, a brisk personality that turns people off. Be the one that includes them. And maybe if enough people will love on that person, you could affect that person mm -hmm. and turn their anger and their resentment toward the world, put a smile on their face. And as Christians, that's our job. You know, we have to let his love shine through us and adopt those unlovelies. Hmm. So it's not always easy, but it's always right. All right, well, <laughs> I know. Somebody type that out. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. I'm sitting here, and uh, there's the scripture, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. We all know that one. I mean, I know probably five scriptures, and, and that's... That's the, that's the number one, um, you know, but being on the other side of that, you know, um, being a 10-year-old little girl who um, her dad shows her unconditional love. I was, I mean, I was a brat. I didn't want his love. You know, I didn't know. I just, I was, <laughs> I just, I was a brat. You know, I pushed him away. I, I didn't trust men, and, but he just constantly loved me. You know, um, or Debbie, who, you know, I, I just was a mess, you know, and she would check up on me at two, in, two in the morning and constantly love me. Or the family that welcomes you in, you know, Dre and I talk about all the time, like we have the best in-laws in the world, you know. But it doesn't just happen. It clearly is sacrifice and um, laying yourself down time and time and time again. And you know, if if Derek. God forbid, was taken from me tomorrow. I'm still their granddaughter. Right. Um, physical adoption into the family, but spiritual as well. You know, there's a spiritual legacy there when you adopt somebody. You know, they brought me into the family, but then they bring me up. You know, they help raise me up. So it's just encouraging everyone and myself that on Sunday mornings don't run to the car and just be all about yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, anything else you want to add? I don't know. I, I just am grateful for this place. I am uh, I get overwhelmed when I see the love that you have for each other. I look at s some of the singles that walk in here that they used to sit by themselves and they don't s get lonely in this place, everyone finds someone else. So I know when we used to, when we first came to the Lord a hundred years ago, uh, <laughs> we went to Grace Chapel uh, when we first found God. And there was a big family of Floyds and Perez's. And if you've ever been to Grace Chapel, the, the, the pews, are small at the front, and as it goes back, they get huge. We filled the back pew even before all the kids and grandkids came along. We filled the whole pew, and so th there's there's a there's huge numbers that God. I, we just get blown away. At, we thought there were a lot of us, <laughs> so we now have a million, you know, and th there is a lot of us. But I would just pray that that God would just keep adding. That I, I look at our, our kids, Dee Dee and Debbie, and I, I just think, God, I'm so grateful that they're following hard after God. And then I start looking at all the grandkids and just – I look at Courtney and, and Caleb and Derek and and Ange and Cody. I, I, 
I just, I'm so excited that it is a generational thing, that we aren't going to go to our graves worried about our next generation. Because if you bring them up in the way they shall go, they will not depart. Not that they're not going to do some things on the way, but our kids <laughs> are not going to depart from it. And I'm very proud of them. And I know that I know that I know that everything that's in their foundation is going to get them through any tough time they have. Because if you have that foundation in your life and you start putting that foundation into your children's lives, it's going to pay off. Sometimes it's, it's frustrating and sometimes it gets tiring. And then when they start school, it's expensive if you choose to put them in a Christian school. All those things are decisions that you will make as you go along the road. But I'll, I'll tell you one thing. The one thing that, that we did that I'm happy about is we somehow got all of our kids and the nieces we were raising and our foster daughter all got to go to Christian schools. And I know that that was a huge help um, putting a foundation. So that's something to, to think about. So I appreciate all of you here and thank you for all the support and all the hugs and when we're frustrated. Um, loving us anyway when we blow it. Thank you for all, all being there. Thank you, Rich. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine. Derek, Derek's on his way. And you're going to tie it up, Rich, right? Yeah. <laughs> I told Derek, I'm like, man, I'm going to need your help ending this. Otherwise, I'm going to be like, all right, everyone's dismissed. See you later. <laughs> I just want to say something real fast. This is not planned at all, but um, I have, I'm a second Megan, and I have no um, no way of being connected to these two here. There's no blood, there's no marriage, nothing that brought us here, but, uh, and my husband's back there, the door open back there, and I know he'll agree with me that uh, when Barb and Angel told us that they adopted us, we don't feel like we, like we might as well be blood related. We just feel like we've been brought in to be family, and we, I feel like, as the adoptee that's not, has no reason to be <laughs> as part of the family, they've made us to, to feel like that. Barb even just said, right before they came up here, I don't know, that's your dad, he said that, <laughs> ask him why he did it, <laughs> and Dee Dee here, she calls me her little sister all the time, so it's not something that's, um, I don't even, it's not like a flippant thing that they say, they wholeheartedly mean it, and they bring you in, and you just feel like you've always known them. It's like the Roach Hotel. You can check in, <laughs> but you can't check out. <laughs> <First> <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to share. <laughs> I just wanted to share that because, like I said, you don't have to actually be related to feel like you are because that's how God's heart is, and it shows through the two of you, and we love you so much. Thank you. Didn't they do an amazing job? You know, as they were speaking, um, I just felt the Spirit of the Lord remind me of how not only are we adopted into physical families, but we're adopted into the family of God. And that's not a church. That's not a building. It's a people. And when God sent Jesus, he sent Jesus to be the bridge so that we can be adopted into that family, into the family of God. Um, and the Bible says that we are co-heirs with Christ. And even though we were strangers and we've done all these crazy things that should disqualify us from being members of the body of Christ or knowing the Lord, he calls us anyway. And he loves us anyways. And Ephesians 2.12 says, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, 
You who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Thank you.